since the show began, it's been clearly evident to me that personally, Kana is 100% best girl. Like, she's best girl. I love her personality. I love that she is, like, as she describes herself, like, a little cynical, a little mean, a little realist. I love the fact that she has tried everything in the entertainment industry and she's given it her all. Like, our girls try child acting, regular acting, singing, music videos, uh, daytime television. She was an effing bell pepper. Like, she's tried everything to keep that money coming in. Like, she's awesome. And I love Kana even more for that. And I love how the episode ended with Mem and with Ruby finding out that she's actually a really good singer. In comparison to them, where they have a lot of attributes of what makes a good idol... Dancing, entertaining, be able to captivate, but they can't sing, which is a big problem. And that is something that you typically do find a lot in your atypical uh, idol groups in Japan, in Korea, even in China. You do see it quite a bit of like these atypical idol groups where there will be like one or two main singers or a main singer and, like, a rapper, and everybody else just kind of plays backup. They may add a little vocals here and there, but they're really, like, the dancers and stuff. If you've ever watched, like, a lot of, like, Korean, um, like, idol shows, the ones who do, like, like from YG Productions, if you're familiar with, like, Korean uh, entertainment, if you watch stuff like YG Productions and stuff when they had, like, different um, idol shows in the early 2010s, I would say maybe, like, uh... 2010 to 2018 or so I used to see a lot of different idol shows and you would see a lot of people who would just go to the show and there they couldn't sing at all their only skill would be you know really good dancing or they would go to the show and they can't sing or dance but they're really good rappers you know or they you know they they were trying to be really good rappers. You have some who can't rap or can't dance at all, but they could sing really well. So it's like that's what these idol groups are typically made out of. So very interesting to kind of really like see that here. And uh, it really puts together, especially if you, if you followed like, especially Korean ones are like the biggest ones in the world, are like the Korean idol groups. But if you ever followed all, all that kind of stuff, you know, J Jap Japanese idol groups, you know, um, all these stuff, like these, these are your atypical things. So I love that they essentially have found their singer and we still need the other two people who are going to encompass this B Komachi band. I was, I'm assuming there's going to be five total. There could be even six. I assume that the one girl uh, who is in Ruby's class, the one with the pink hair, which is her best friend, I assume she's also going to join this group at some point. I don't know if that's going to have intervention by Aqua again or not, but I definitely think it's it's interesting. Um, okay, so this episode was all over the place, but it was awesome, and we found a lot, a lot of things, so I'll kind of go through the different things and my reaction to them. But if you were to stop the video now, this episode 9 out of 10... Uh, virtually Oshinoko has just been doing no wrong. It's been fantastic. And this was another really, really fantastic episode. So, first stop on our trip here down um, review lane is, uh, let's talk about Mem. So, um, Mem is a very interesting character. I like her quite a bit. Uh, we find out that she has 380,000 subscribers on YouTube, which, if you follow the YouTube game, uh, if you look at my subscribers, you know that, like, 380 is, like, that's a big deal, right? I would say anything north of 100K, you know, uh, uh, anything north of 100K for an active YouTuber is really, really good. A lot of times you'll see a lot of people who are north of 100K, but they post once a month, maybe, you know, or so, and, like, they're just not really active. But for an active person who publishes frequently, 380K is a big deal, especially if they if she has a really good viewer base of people who, like, you know, come back and watch her stuff. Another important thing is she has 680K on TikTok, which I think is also a really important thing, too, because TikTok isn't really good for revenue, but it's good for brand deals, and, you know, it's, you know brand deals really want to go through there, so she probably has a lot of brand deals, so it's good for money. And it's also good just for, uh, you know, a wide range of uh, a, a wide range net of just eyeballs on your content, whether or not like those people are really like, you know, viewers or fans. The fact that you have that many followers means you have a good 
enough um, presence and you make good content on that platform for somebody to follow you. Now, does somebody, you know, rewatch a lot of content? Sometimes, yes. Most of the time, the answer is no. They follow. They move on. They stay on their For You page. They don't typically go to the Follow page. That's how TikTok tends to work. I myself still need to get on that platform. I still have not made that jump yet uh, just because I just don't, boy, don't got the time. Uh, okay, we find out that Mem has been pretending to be 18. Uh, she's actually 25. That's a big, big difference. Girl is uh, much older than she was pretending to be. Now, is that old by any means? No. Is that old in the eyes of the idol industry? That is where the answer becomes yes. We get put down the path of, uh, you know, even she called it out herself, that typically if you're anything north of 20, agencies don't even look at you. You have to be under 20. That's what they're going for here. So she's been a little bit of a struggle bus. We find out her backstory, which is really interesting. Basically, long story short, her mom got sick. She needed money. She had to go do everything. She had to kind of put her, her dream on the back burner and had to kind of go and Try and do whatever she could. Bartend, uh, work at nightclubs, restaurants, side gigs, anything just to make some money. And she even said herself, you know, which is, you know, it happens in life. Time goes by quick. She even says, you know, by the time I looked up, I was 23. And her dreams basically have died. So then she looked to YouTube and she kind of made a platform on there. And she re tried to represent herself as, you know, the young 17, 18-year-old girl in high school, parentless. You know what I mean? Like, that's her brand uh, that she built and people believe her. Because, you know, if you could really be on YouTube and I could be, you know, I could be right now. I could tell you, guys, yeah, I'm 25. And, you know, if that's what I push constantly, you know, there's going to be folks that that believe that. You know what I mean? And, um, and if you believe that, thank you. Uh, but, you know, that's just the way that that works. So... I think that is incredibly interesting, and the fact is, you know, she joined her group. Uh, moving right along, a lot of other things happen this episode. Uh, the main thing is Kana is still super-duper pissed at Aqua about the whole Akane thing. Uh, even if she understands that she hates it, she doesn't, you know, she doesn't like it at all. Uh, we finally see uh, Aqua meeting with the producer guy. He gets some really good information about, um, you know, Eyes Pass. We find out that... She was with La La Lai, the same uh, theater company that wasn't as it is now, but it is uh, that Akane is there. He basically tells uh, uh, Aqua that she fell in love there because she basically changed while she was there. She got mature and basically, you know, what girls do, you know what I mean? Like she just, she became mature for whoever she fell in love with at that point, probably was older because you got to remember she was 15 at the time. So he was 14, 15. So he was probably much older. So she became uh, mature to try and fit that mold. Um, and uh, he also tells Aqua about that he's interested in the group that he's creating. And he gets the girls a slot at the Japan Idol Festival. So I think that's really cool too. And then the whole thing about uh, them trying to pick the main character. Which is probably going to end up being Kana because she can seeing so she might be end up being the face of B Komachi a lot of other things happen a lot of other funny things happen but overall really great episode if I just kind of put a bow on it uh, I love Aqua's reaction to Mem uh, I like his reaction to Kana uh, and I like him finding out that he's going to inevitably need to get closer to Akane to get more information also Kana is my little bell pepper so let me know what you guys thought about this episode down in the comments below. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Can't wait to see more. I think we're wrapping up this season pretty quickly, too. We are on episode 9. We have an, a total of episodes of 11, so we have 10 and 11 left. We have two more episodes before Oshi No Co. Season 1 wraps up. All right, my friends. Peace.